Hello, and welcome to the next session of NanoServe's AFM Masterclass. As a reminder, the AFM Masterclass sessions are held on the third Thursday of each month. Today, we will cover the best practices for topography imaging, and you can see the rest of the sessions listed below. Generally speaking, there are two main modes for imaging topography, static mode and dynamic mode. In static mode, the tip is dragged across the surface, applying a certain force set by the user. It is a fairly aggressive interaction with the surface. If the scan is done perpendicularly to the cantilever axis, lateral force can be probed, which provides friction information. In dynamic mode, which also has other names like intermittent contact or AC mode, the cantilever is oscillated at or near its resonance frequency, typically in the tens to hundreds of kilohertz though it can be higher for small cantilevers. The oscillating cantilever taps along the surface at a set amplitude, virtually eliminating any lateral force and thus significantly reducing wear of both the tip and the sample. In both modes, there is a feedback parameter set by the user, which the system attempts to keep constant. A good example is a cruise control in a car, where the speed of the car is kept constant by the car's computer, slowing it down if it goes above the set speed and speeding it up if it goes below. In static mode, the feedback parameter is cantilever deflection, and in dynamic mode, it is oscillation amplitude. Other dynamic modes exist with different feedback parameters, such as phase shift. AFM images topography by tracking the surface to keep the feedback parameter constant. The feedback loop operation is controlled by gain settings, the higher the gains, the more feedback. In case the feedback is insufficient, slower scans may solve the issue at the expense of taking more time. In static mode, the cantilever deflection is used as a set point feedback parameter. Deflection, read by a laser reflecting from the cantilever onto a photodiode, is representative of the cantilever bending which in turn is directly proportional to the force applied by the cantilever to the surface. The static mode results in a relatively aggressive interaction with the surface. Dynamic mode is a little more complex. In order to use a cantilever in dynamic mode, it first needs to be tuned. Tuning the cantilever means finding its resonance frequency and oscillating it at or near it using oscillation amplitude as a feedback loop set point. The two methods to oscillate the cantilever are piezo, which is the traditional method, and photothermal, which will be discussed later. Here, we can see a resonance peak of a cantilever. The resonance, or natural frequency, is that at which the cantilever exhibits the highest oscillation amplitude. The drive frequency and amplitude are set by the user, and the excitation circuit attempts to reach the set parameters. An example of setting free amplitude of oscillation in Nanosurf software is shown on this slide. The amplitude was set to 750 millivolts on the left and 1 volt on the right. You can see that the excitation amplitude on the right went up in order to reach the desired free amplitude. Likewise, the drive frequency is set in the same window. The further the drive frequency is away from the resonance peak, the more drive amplitude will be required to reach the desired free amplitude. Shown here are three ways drive frequency can be set, below, at, or above the resonance. The reason drive frequency is set below or above the resonance is to ensure a specific type of interaction regime between the surface and the tip, which will be discussed in detail in session 3. Since the cantilever vibrates on its own, thanks to the energy imparted to it by the molecules moving at room temperature, 
a thermal tune can be performed, which can also be used to identify the resonance frequency of the cantilever. Such thermal tune is shown here on the right. And on the left is a piezo frequency sweep. Both can be used to identify the resonance frequency of a cantilever. Typically, thermal tunes have a weaker signal to noise ratio than the piezo tunes. As mentioned earlier, photothermal tuning is a new option of cantilever excitation. To make it work, a second laser is incorporated into the AFM and is focused on the base of the cantilever. This causes an extremely localized heating of the illuminated spot on the cantilever. The laser power is modulated, causing the spot to repeatedly heat up and cool down and thus expand and contract, thus bending the cantilever and causing its oscillation. Photothermal tuning works with all cantilevers, but it is most effective with coated cantilevers. It has a number of advantages over traditional piezo-actuated excitation. While the shaker piezo shakes the entire cantilever chip and can couple the vibrations into the whole AFM head, for the thermal actuation only shakes the cantilever itself. This results in a much cleaner resonance spectrum with peaks closely matching theoretically predicted shapes, like shown below, unlike the piezo tunes which produce a forest of peaks. This is particularly important for measurements in liquid, the cantilever tuning can be very difficult due to lower Q factors. Once tuned, it is time to image. Imaging parameters need to be optimized for best image quality. The three main parameters to adjust are amplitude setpoint, free amplitude, and integral gain. The amplitudes are measured in volts read from the photodiode and are dependent on the cantilever and laser alignment. In order to convert volts of amplitude to nanometers, a cantilever needs to be calibrated which will be discussed in detail in session 6. An important consequence is that the same amplitude voltage on one cantilever will correspond to different physical oscillation amplitude in nanometers for another cantilever. The set point is set as a percentage of free amplitude. 80% is a good starting point. Free amplitude, as mentioned earlier, is the maximum amplitude the cantilever achieves as it is driven by the system. Integral gain controls how responsive the feedback loop is to changes in topography. Too low of a gain will cause the system to not track the features well, and too high gain will produce noise. Shown here, are some examples of how the set point affects image quality. The higher the percentage, the lower the set point. The set point on the right is clearly too low. The entire image is smeared. There is not enough interaction of the tip with the surface. Set points on the left and the middle are both acceptable. Too high of a set point can cause the cantilever to a rebound of the surface and cause a ringing noise in the image. This image shows the results of different free amplitudes on image quality. It is evident that insufficient free amplitude, less than 16 millivolts in this case, caused the smearing due to lack of sufficient interaction between the surface and the tip, similarly to insufficient set point. Feedback gain is the last but not the least parameter to be optimized. Image acquired with the ideal gain is shown in the middle of the slide. Too low of a gain results in smears and streaks. 
It is most evident when comparing the line profiles of forward and reverse scans, which do not match when the gain is too low. The feedback loop is too slow and cannot faithfully track the surface, as shown in the example on the left. Too high gain, shown on the right, causes self-excitation of the feedback loop, producing noise known as ringing, and can be seen as high-frequency oscillation uh, in the line profile. The AFM tip mechanically sampled the surface, and thus, the condition of the tip has a direct impact on the image quality. Shown here are two common tip artifacts due to damaged tip. Blunt tip will contact the features with its sides. Thus, for a tip with a triangular cross-section, every feature will look like a triangle, as shown on the left. Another common artifact is double tip, where instead of having one apex, the tip now has two. This results in the duplication of every feature in the image, as shown in the middle and right images. As could be inferred from the previous slide, tip selection is critical for good images. The tip has to be tailored to imaging mode, imaging medium, and the sample. Contact mode typically calls for softer cantilevers, while tapping mode uses hard cantilevers with higher resonance frequencies. Imaging in liquid works better with gold-coated cantilevers, since gold is more inert and is better at preserving its reflectivity in solution. Delicate samples, as one might guess, require softer cantilevers. Tip radius is another concern. If lateral dimensions of the features are critical, then small tip radius and high tip aspect ratio are required. The quality of the image depends on the tip sample interaction regime. As the tip approaches the sample at every interaction point, it has to push through the attractive regime in order to enter the repulsive regime, as shown in the force curve on the right. Best topography imaging occurs when the tip sample interaction is consistently in the net repulsive regime. Making sure that the tip is in the regime of your choice will be discussed in detail in session three. Thank you all for your attention, and we are now open for a short Q&A session.